Welcome. Welcome Hi, everyone. everyone to the wonderful thing that we've been planning for you guys for how many months? I think it's been like four, no, four months. I think it's been about four months. We were gonna, we were planning to do this like inside of our library and then Denise, who is the person right in the middle of the screen there, she said, why don't we do this online? Because all of our, you know, everything closed down with the pandemic. So we're doing this now online and we're really, really happy to have you all here. My name is Marlon Moore. I'm the library media project coordinator for the library's uh, maker spaces and also the Technobus. And, um, you know, basically we're doing this because that young lady right there, Denise Mendez, it was her idea to create this, this beautiful project to do, uh, you know, some sort of a like STEM, STEAM, uh, workshop or series of workshops inside of our libraries and like I said we ended up doing them online just because of the, the shutdown but uh, Denise did you want to kind of speak about kind of why you wanted to do this and what are you looking for everybody to get out of it a little bit before I go on unmuting <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's right. Zoom has a spacebar feature that you can yeah. mute and unmute, and I forget about that. Me too. Hi. So my name is Denise Mendez. I am a basically lived in the Miami-Dade County public school systems within the Miami-Dade County public library system. I went to school, I middle elementary, middle school, and high school here. I did my first two years at FIU, and then I chose my electrical engineering track, and then I, I transferred to University of Florida. I had an internship at Kennedy Space Center because of the amazing essay I wrote about the power of sitting underneath the Saturn V rocket, which mm. is just it, the scale of something of that size is amazing. And the fact that it was built using slide rulers, which many of you will not know what a slide ruler is. Uh, and it was not built with the world of 3D that we're going to get into today with the staff of Miami-Dade County Public Library System. And do I get into like careers or is that next? Uh, yeah, we're going to kind of roll into that next. Okay, perfect. And that's my introduction and I'll be back on in a sec. Cool. So yeah, so you know, we'll keep it short, but yeah, Denise, this is her brainchild and you know, we definitely want to like you know, um, you guys are gonna get a chance to hear from the library staff. You can see them all wearing their library shirts like me. And, um, but we also have the other half of, the other third of this partnership, which is the Black Girls Code um, staff and people who support Black Girls Code initiatives. And did you guys wanna say anything about, uh, you know, this, this presentation? Yeah, it's really excited to have everybody join us. Um, it's we put a lot of work into this and we hope you're excited just to learn some new activities and we're trying to continue to grow with y'all and this time of uh, transition virtually. So thank you for joining us. Okay, all right. So that gentleman there, as you can see on his screen is Mr. Leonard Pitts. And I think he's the uh, Miami chapter lead for Black Girls Code, is that correct? East Coast program manager. Yep. And be excited. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, we're going to kind of talk about, you know, I wanted to mention some things really quickly. So I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see some stuff. And it's just basically, a, I'll go down it really quickly. But just so you can see, can you guys all see that screen that just popped up? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, you know, again, this is the Tinkercad Tinker series presented by Black Girls Code, Miami-Dade Public Library System, and Denise Mendez. And uh, just a couple of different things that we just wanted to show you were, were some, um, I think my slide went too fast, so let me go down a little bit. Yep, that was right. Um, but we, we have some of these spaces inside of our libraries, like our Miami Beach Regional Library and our West Kendall Library. We have these beautiful spaces inside where you can go in there and do like, you know, you see the recording booth for music recording. We've got 3D printers and Mac computers and green screen and photography. You see uh, some of our staff, there's Hector over there teaching a photography class. There's Diana teaching, um, showing her art, uh, climate of art, art exhibit that she does every year and some students there who are 
working on like the, the uh, drawing tablets and there's some more staff there's a uh, um, Jaden. Jaden they're teaching photography and there's Edward over there teaching actually teaching one of the things we're gonna be teaching later which is Tinkercad and there's Hector again you can't see him his head's right by uh, facing us and over here this is our techno bus have you guys seen the techno bus driving around Miami Florida you can't miss it it's a huge bus and it's full of technology like here's me teaching drone classes to some kids over at one of the parks in Miami so we do all kind of things from drone classes to music to filmmaking same kind of stuff we do inside of our libraries uh, maker spaces and there's Ashley she couldn't join us today she wasn't feeling well but she's doing a we have a little 3d printer on the techno bus and so that's you know one of the things I just want to show you guys is that you can come into our spaces and see not only like learn the same kind of stuff that we're teaching you today but you can also use the 3D printers and come in there and learn from these same staff and learn how to do a lot of stuff, even way more than we're talking about right now. We all even have like a business center and stuff like that. So just wanted to kind of get that out to you. But uh, yeah, we're gonna move along and just quickly talk about like career paths. And um, so let me pull up my, my agenda just to kind of remember some of the things we were talking about. Because, you know, with this, this uh, workshop that we're teaching you today, we want you to be able to connect the dots and understand that the things that you're learning, like 3D modeling, even though it's basic that we're teaching you now, you can start stepping up your knowledge and get into things like, you know, uh, graphic design, gaming. You know, I don't know if you guys ever heard of 3DS Max and Maya. That's the stuff that they use at like Pixar to make these huge Disney movies and Star Wars and stuff. This is how you start by learning these these things. So, um, you know, if you guys want to jump in and talk about some other career paths that people that these kids can get into, feel free. Well, also we have um, 3D 3D animation, you know, as well uh, manufacturing product design like toys. The toy industry they use 3D models to make all their toys. Um, video games. All of all of these things, and architecture, obviously architecture, buildings, and you know, yeah. have tons of things with that, and you know, and the the big big one is film that that Marlon was talking about. That's that's huge, you know, it's a huge yeah. industry. As well as, um, you know, I myself am a fashion designer, um, so I do, um, you know, I deal with a lot of art and creativity. So 3D, when I came upon 3D designing, I really got into trying to learn more about 3D design fashion wear. Um, so right now, when we go through some of the stuff, like if you don't mind, I'd like to share my screen. Um, and everybody just keep in mind that um, I have two computers going on. <laughs> so let me see if I can share my screen here. Um, here we go. Oh, share. Can you all see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So if you, you know, for everybody out there, if you're an inspiring artist or a fashion designer, or if you think that you'd like to go into this route, like just look at all these cool stuff that you can make. Obviously, like most of this stuff, you have to like print it in pieces because due to the fact that the 3D printer can be kind of small. Um, but as well as, you know, there's textiles. And one of the coolest ones that I found was actually this one. I thought it was really cool where you actually print on the um, textile itself. And then this one, of course, looks like a, it, it's, this is all 3D printed and it, and it actually moves um, like a textile itself. So that's, I found that pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. So. I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, again, my name is Dinah for everybody. I work with the Miami Dade Public Library System. I'm the Library Media Project Instructor, and I focus mostly on the arts. Um, and I can't wait till we open up again so I could meet everybody or anybody who wants to come and visit us here in, at the West Kendall Regional Library and visit UMIC. Um, please do. We always welcome everybody. Jaden? Yes. Uh, piggybacking off of that, um, I'm also a library media project instructor. I'm from the Miami Beach Regional Branch, and my background is actually in animation and art. 
Um, 3D modeling is definitely a great foundation if you're curious to get into gaming or animation and toys, like uh, Edward said. Um, and also with fashion, a little hobby of mine that I like to do aside from drawing is cosplay, which is basically like costuming, going to like, you know, uh, comic conventions and dressing up as characters and such. So 3D modeling is also a great gateway for uh, prop making as well for like costumes or production. So that's a little tidbit. I add. Great. I'm not All sure right. how, but I kind of lost my screen. I don't know. <laughs> you guys can keep going. I'll figure it out. I, I can go uh, next. So I worked at a company called Magic Leap who was making basically what is a, a digital headset that lets you see the real world, but overlays these digital objects in front of it. And everything that was made for the device, all those objects required 3D. And I'm gonna share my screen for a minute as well to just talk about what those, the, the 3D world looks like, the 3D world of digital objects. And there's my present, there it is. So there's the, what's called the X realities. And if any of you are taking algebra, X is kind of the variable because X reality stands for augmented reality, which is kind of like Pokemon Go, where you have objects in front of you, but they're superimposed into the real world. They're not really um, present in that world. Then you have virtual reality, which is VR. And virtual reality, you put on a headset and you're transported into another world. And you can't see the world around you. You're not present in this world. And if you want to like delve into what the world of VR looks like Ready Player One as a movie. I don't know if that's age appropriate uh, for you, but just make sure you ask your parents. Uh, is is an example of like what VR could be in the future. Right now, VR is a little less tame than that. And then there's the world of spatial computing, also called mixed reality, the MR in the XR domain. And there's also Web AR, which I did not uh, talk into talk. I did not add to the slide. But spatial computing is the digital objects that you can interact with other people all in the same space, still being cognizant of the world around you. And these are, uh, the animation's probably pretty bad uh, because of the refresh rate, but these are animated 3D objects. I think Jaden was talking, one of the staff from Miami-Dade County Public Library System was talking about gaming and animation. Those are all built with 3D objects, and it starts with primitives, which the team will get into. And primitives are basic geometry shapes like sphere or cube or rectangle. And everything starts with a primitive. And just take a look at the helicopter, right? The housing or the area where the pilots sit probably started with a sphere. And all of the little objects that are attached to the helicopter are then broken down into tiny little objects. And this is just an example of things that you can build with 3D and the staff is gonna like this journey over the course of the next four weeks. We'll talk about different tools that, you, that are off the shelf that you can use in the cloud, which is on a web browser to build 3D objects and start playing and learning about what this world looks like. And Marlon keeps giving me kudos about the idea, but ideas are nothing without a team and execution, right? So just because I had an idea, I found Marlon and Marlon loves this space and Marlon brought his staff. And then I found, uh, I met Taylor Wallace and Corrine at, an, at a STEM event from Black Girls Code. And I'm like, and they do STEM outreach for kids. And I, I had this idea because I had just met Marlon and I had just met Taylor and Corrine. It's like, we should do something together, right? And I, I helped to put the team together, but really the team all executed. Everybody did their share, nothing, in this world is built without your team and the people that you collaborate with. And I, this is awesome that we're doing this and I'm so excited to play with Tinker with the staff, Tinkercad with the staff of Miami-Dade County Public Library System. That's awesome. Thank See, you. That's, that's why uh, you know, we have a, a design engineer, a systems engineer like Denise who can you know, talk about the real deal. So guys, we're gonna transition on. Uh, Lenard is giving, keeping us on track here. We're gonna go ahead and start our lesson now that you guys have talked a little bit about career paths and some of the things that you can learn. So we're gonna jump in. I think Jaden, our staff Jaden, is gonna be the first to present and talk to you guys about Tinkercad. 
Yes. Thank you, Marlon. So we're going to take it away and let's get this thing started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. One second. All right, can everybody see the Tinkercad homepage? Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right. So some of you may have received instructions on how to create an account, but for those of you who maybe not have had the time to look at it, we're just going to recap that and go over it real quick to get us started. So if you look over at the top right corner of the screen over here, you'll see an option to either sign in or join now. We're going to go over joining now just to quickly show you how to create an account if you don't already have one. So we're going to go ahead and click on join now. And it'll prompt you over to this window. Now, if you are under the age of 18, you most likely will need a parent's permission to create an account. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go with create your own personal account. And then you have the option to either use a Gmail or a Yahoo or sign in with your Apple ID, whichever email you prefer. I'm going to click sign up with email for now, just for a general email. And you'll notice here it's going to ask for your date of birth. So I'm just going to put one as an example. You'll see what happens. Let's say I put year 2002. Second. No sooner than that. You'll notice that if it's under the age of 18, it automatically asks you here for your parents' email. So depending on your age, you might have to ask the parents' permission for them to create your username, password, and account using their email address. If you're over the age of 18, you'll be able to create the account yourself using your personal email. So that's pretty much the basics on how to create your account. So now we're going to go to sign in if you already have one. We're going to show you how you can get access to your account. So we're going to go ahead and click on sign in here at the bottom. It's going to take us to this window where we will type in our email address. Once you type in your email address, you hit next, put in your password, and that's all there is to it. You'll be right in. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Dinah. Yes. Take it away. Guys, okay. So back to me. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let me know if everybody sees it. Yeah. You guys see it? Yes, yep. we see it. And um, just just to mention that uh, we when we sent you guys the instructions on logging into this meeting, that we sent you all the instructions on how to log in and create a Tinkercad and also the Tinker account that we're going to be doing later on in the month. Sorry, Dinah. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Again, my name is Dinah. Thank you again for coming. We really appreciate that. Um, and let me just show you the, the home uh, face that you're going to see. As soon as you click in on to sign in, uh, you'll be able to see all of these uh, little great designs. And you can see I've been trying to play with it and uh, just to show you guys a few basics. Um, so this will be your home base. You'll see all of the designs that you've created in the past. You'll create your new design here and they will be saved. But just to show you a quick uh, little tabs here, you're gonna have, you have your gallery. When you click into your gallery, you could go ahead and explore other designs that other designers are out there looking at uh, making. You could get ins inspirations and maybe some new ideas or just go ahead and look at what else other people around the world are creating. If you look into the blog, you could um, go ahead and find other things that might be interesting to you as to what's new on Tinkercad, maybe for your teachers, parents, for sure, if there's any parents out there listening, um, look into what your kids can get into, uh, what other things they could explore. And of course you have new features as well. Um, if, you if you click on the learning tab, um, it will actually take you to starters, lessons, and new projects maybe uh, that you'd like to explore. And I recommend always when we're at uh, UMake, we always start with the starters um, as this is a very simple little lessons that will teach you how to the basics and Eddie will go through some of these as well. So you can actually 
see any, and then after that, go your, uh, you yourself can actually go ahead and do these starters. And of course, if you are a teacher or a parent, you could go ahead and um, personalize um, your classroom and create classrooms for your students as well. Or if you're a student yourself, you could go ahead and actually join a classroom that your um, teacher is actually going to create for you. Uh, yeah, and so now my coworker Hector will go ahead and take us into the next step. Hector? Oh, let me stop sharing, I'm sorry. All right, my name is Hector and let me go ahead and uh, share my screen for you guys. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So this is what you would see right now uh, when you log in and this is the, the work uh, space. And we're gonna click where it says create a new design to get started. So go ahead and click create a new design. And it's gonna load up the screen. And the first thing you'll notice is that uh, there is something called the work plane, which is basically your desktop. This is where you're gonna be adding the objects and you're gonna be manipulating them. On the left-hand side, we can see the different viewing options and I'm gonna drag a couple of objects, which we have right here on the right-hand side. You see basic shapes, and you do get some options. For example, if I click the little down arrow on the right-hand side, we have text and numbers, which you are able to use uh, a whole word or individual um, letters and numbers. You also have characters, which have been pre-built, so you can add uh, hands and feet and different objects to your characters. We also have connectors. If you were to create a, a figure that were able to move, you can use these. And just recently added was this new uh, making at home space. So these are all different objects that you can get started with creating, but we're gonna keep it simple right now since this is a beginner's level. So we're gonna go to basic shapes. Now I'm just gonna drag two objects onto the work line. You literally just click and drag and we're talking about the viewing aspect. So when you get to the main screen, as you can see, I can click on an object and it has a, light, a little light blue um, border. So you know that that object is selected. And if we click this little square button, which is called the fit to view uh, button, you click on it and it actually zooms in into that particular object. If you wanna zoom out so that you can see the entire desktop, you can go back to the little home button and that brings you back out and let's say that we wanted to focus on the other object we click on it and again fit to view so that you can zoom in uh, you can also manually zoom in and zoom out by using these two buttons if I, for example if I click on this one you zoom back a little bit and the more you click the further away you are and if you click on the plus sign you actually zoom in to that object and finally, let me go back to this little uh, button, home view again. Uh, you see a little cube on your left-hand side, and you can actually look at your object from different sides. As you can see, this is top. So if I click on it, you can look at your object from the top. You see some arrows, and when you click on them, for example, this one will bring you to the front side view. If I click on the right side view, it clicks you to the right view. Let me go back to the front again. And if I click on the other arrow, you can look at it from the left and from the bottom. So this is something that is very, very useful and important. And if you click on it, actually, sorry, if you click on the queue, you can actually rotate the whole desk. So one of the main uh, and most important features of working in a 3D space is that you have to be able to look at something from multiple sides. Because from the front, the object could look perfectly fine, but if you look at it from the top, you see that it might not be perfectly aligned. Okay, so I'm gonna throw it over to Diana. She's gonna finish up on some of the other features. And let me stop the share. It's me again. <laughs> okay guys, so now we're inside our little work playing work area where we can have lots of fun. You see girls roll. Oh, I see what you did there, Dinah. I see. <laughs> Girls roll. So I made this cute little keychain um, that you can yourself create. This is just a simple box 
and also we have our text here. But that's not what I'm really here talking about. So I'm gonna talk about this option, these option bars up here. So if you click on your object, you'll see that you're actually, um, if you click away, they're frozen. And if you click on it, they get activated, right? So now here's your quick copy. You wanna copy it. So I'm copying the heart and I'm gonna paste it. You see how it does it double? You could delete that. Also select the heart again, and you could actually duplicate or repeat it. It actually duplicates it right on top, so you have to click on it and drag to the side. And of course, if you wish to delete that item, here's a little trash can. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back, which you could also undo as well. Now, if you select the item, you notice this blue halo around it, that's gonna tell you that it's selected. And right here, you're gonna notice that this is my solid color. You can have other colors, or you can make it into a hole as well. But this shape here, if you see this lock, you could actually lock it and you cannot move it anymore, but you could work with the other items that are unlocked. Let's go ahead and unlock this. Let's say that I want to only work with these uh, objects here, these shapes, but I don't, I want to move this to the side or I want to just disappear it for the meanwhile. I could actually disappear with a little um, light bulb. Let's bring it back. And also this item here, oops, I'm sorry. So when that happens, just go home. Um, if, you're, if you have a mouse, this is most likely going to happen. So you're gonna have to uh, you know, get used to that. Um, but since this is already grouped, this is already grouped, you can notice and tell that it's grouped already because it's a solid color and you can see that it has a hole right here. But I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup it. This is my ungroup button. You see, once it, it's ungrouped, you'll see that it has several different colors. So that's gonna tell you like, oh, this is, there's something odd. So when you think it's ready, just make sure that if it's not one solid color, that means it's still separate pieces, you see? Let's go ahead and undo that. Let's go ahead and click, drag over all the items to select them all. And I'm going to go ahead and group it as well. One cool, and then I'll change one solid color. Oh, but I don't like red, it's okay. So now if, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this last final feature. The cool trick is here, you could click on your object. You could also select it by holding shift on your computer on your keyboard and select the other ones as well. And this is going to activate the align option here. And here the align option, I'm gonna use this. And it's cool because if you hover over these little dots here, it's gonna give you a preview of what it's going to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and align my objects here. And you see, you could go ahead and look at it from any side and it's perfectly aligned. One cool thing about this, um, you could actually use your mouse and right click hold on your work plane and you could actually orbit around it rather than just using the little toggle box over here. So I really find that useful and you can move it around and have more freedom with it. Anyways, thank you. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to our wonderful coworker, Eddie. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes, yes sir. Can you see me? Is it where we on this? Yeah, like, we can see you. All right. Well, as you were watching the work plane, I just want to mention that that blue work plane is actually, they can be different sizes depending on the 3D printer that you're using. So the, when uh, Marlon showed you earlier the, the 3D printer on the Technobus, there was a little, a, a little creature that was printed, being printed, and it was this little Yoda over here. And here I have some keychains also that were being printed as well, and we print these a lot and give them away on the techno bus. And not the Yoda, not the Yoda, but but the but the little the keychains. The Yoda, those it's like a you know a fun thing that we printed. It takes takes some time to print those. The larger the object is, the longer it takes to print. And depending on the type of three D printers you have, will will determine how quickly or how long it takes. So you know and. And 3D printing technology keeps changing, so I'm sure the newer versions will keep will be even better and faster and and everything. So here I'm gonna share my screen. Let me see if I can get this thing going. And here we have the work plane. Oh, 
Can you guys see my screen? Yes. All right, excellent. So I'm gonna, now Dinah, thank you very much for showing us all the, the things and, and, and Hector. Absolutely. And so now I, I didn't introduce myself earlier. I, I, I'm a, I've, I've worked at, a, I've been working at, on the techno bus for Miami-Dade County for, for over a year now. And before that, I was a teacher and I've worked in the public school, the private school and the charter school systems before that. And I taught technology and, and, and some other things. But um, so my knowledge is in, I've, I've done all of these types of things, little bits and pieces. And for sure the, you know, I love, I love what I do. I love teaching. And um, it's, always, it's always a pleasure to, to be able to, to do this. Now, now here we have, I just had a whole bunch of different, different um, key chains and things that, that, uh, that I had done. The one that we're going to be doing today is going to look, look like this. And this is the one that, that, um, that Dinah had on there, something like this. And you guys will be able to see that how, how it is to create one of these. And it's, and it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. So feel free to just watch and follow, or you can even follow along if, if, if you have the, have it open. Excuse me, Edward, can I have a quick, ask a quick question? Sure. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody's kind of on the same pace. Just ask okay. some of the students just to see if they have any quick questions real fast and sure. are in the same um, area. So um, if anybody are our participants, if you are in the same exact area and everything is running smooth, can you type in the chat at the bottom um, and just say like a uh, thumbs up that you're okay, like you, everything's okay, like you're in the right uh, position. Cause sometimes I'm trying to like go along too. And sometimes I kind of got ran behind. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure everybody good. Okay, we got two. So I stopped sharing for a second so we can, I can look at the, the chat as well. Okay. Let's see if I have any questions. Okay. Any questions that you guys have, please? I know okay. that maybe some of you are kind of advanced. Um, you know, there's nothing that you, nothing worth that you cannot learn new, you know, something new that you can learn every day. So just be a little patient. Eddie? Okay, yeah, it's good. We good. We good. Okay. So let me see. Oh, session lost. Okay, I just have to refresh. It'll pop back up. And also while, while it's reloading, I just wanted to let you all know, the folks who are joining them, us, the teens, he's going to show you how to make some stuff. And if you want to work on this on your own before the next class is going to be next Friday when we're going to teach you more things, create something, like create a keychain that he's going to show you how to do and post that to our social media. Or you can even email it back to us and we'll post it. Um, you know, you remember we emailed you all the instructions, how to log in to get to this meeting. You can either like just send it back to us in an email, you know, your, your design, or you can just, uh, you know, because once you're done creating your design, you can just download that as like a JPEG and you can just post that right onto our social media page. And remember our social media is the You Make Miami. You Make Miami or Miami-Dade Public Library System. We have it on Facebook and on Instagram. Yeah, I'm having some technical issues here. It's not wanting to load. Let me see what's going on here. And also, just so you guys okay. still um, remember that you could, are you ready, Eddie? Yeah, it's not It's not wanting to load. It's taking forever. So I'm gonna have to re reopen this and, um, like exit out completely. Like yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. So for the participants out there, a new challenge. I know that if you are a beginner, totally understand you want to play around and make this cool little keychain. It's very simple to do that Eddie will show you. But also while you do that, go around your house and look for problems or think about solution designs that you could find around your house. Simple things that will make your life a uh, a little better, right? Or simpler, um, something to solve an issue. 
Um, like maybe I know, like, let's take, for example, the doorstop. Somebody already designed that, but that's something, a solution to a problem. If a if the door refuses to stay open, you could just put a doorstop and that's a solution, right? So that's a simple one. But you could go around your house and see, well, what else can I design? So, and this is gonna help you not only with critical thinking skills, but in your designing skills, it's gonna help you start developing skills to think about solutions for problems instead of just getting stuck on the problem itself, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to add, uh to Dinah's comment that I, I have a wooden, I have a wooden dresser and mm -hmm. it had a wooden knob and you know that you can screw in that wooden knob only so many times before the inside of, of it is too loose. Yes. Yeah, so I, I 3d printed a, a knob for the dresser, which is so much better. Like it's lasted six or seven years. <laughs> it's yellow. The dresser's blue. It kind of looks funny and quirky and, and cute but uh yeah like there that was a problem that i had in my house that that i solved using a 3d model that i made and it's a, a knob is an oval and a cylinder mm -hmm. put together yeah. all right i got it to load but but it, i had to open up a different um account because for whatever reason that account wasn't wanting to load anymore i don't know why all right so let me share the screen and here we go Okay, apologize about that. Technical difficulties, sometimes they happen. So can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. So over here on the right, so we're gonna create one of the keychains and, and just like just like Diana and Hector were talking about, we take, we take an object, in this case, the box, and we're gonna drag it on. And you can click on it and you can see that it that it highlights in blue and you can you can zoom in a little bit. So we're gonna do that just a little bit. We're gonna zoom in to get a little bit closer. Now, if you, when you look here, you see that on, on the right hand side, this little plane shows up when you click on the shape. And if you click here, you can you can change the color. Now this color is just for you visually, because when you go to 3D print it, you're gonna pick the colors via the filament or the type of material you use on the 3D printer. So this is just more for you to visualize it yourself. So I'm gonna pick a purple, which is a good color. And then here you see the length, width, and the height. If you put your mouse over, you can see, you can see on the tools on the side, it'll tell you, okay, this is 20 over here, 20 here, and 20 here. So in order to start this off, there's a couple ways that we can do this to create the base of the keychain. So you can change your width and the height on, on, on this side over here manually by clicking on it if you know what it's going to be. So here we can put 60 for the width and we click on here and we go five for the height and press enter and you'll see that it, that it automatically changes. So if you make a mistake, when you're in Tinkercad, you can click the undo button, which is up here. It's also, you can see a little shortcut underneath that control Z. You can also click that. So I'm gonna click on that twice to show you. It makes, bring back the box. So we're gonna do this a different way. So we're also going to take the box, highlight it and stretch it. So you can click on the little handle on the side. So I'm clicking on this one here and I'm going to, to drag it until I get to see how the number is changing on the bottom for for the width. So I'm going to bring it to 60. And up, oh, brought it to 61. And I then I go to the height. And I click on that and drag it down until I bring it down to five. So I'm showing you two different ways to do this. Just so you know, just so you know that it allows you to do do it both ways. So I want you guys, if you're on your computers, you can you can create this one with 60 and height five to get your keychain to the right the right dimensions for the for the what we are going to be doing. Oh, and that time it it made it too big. All right. So I'm gonna go back. All right. So this is this now it's at width 60 and height five. The next thing we want to do is drag two cylinders. 
onto each side. So we're gonna round the edges. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So we bring one cylinder to this side and one cylinder to this side. Now I wanna change the view a little bit and bring it so that we can see the top view. And we can drag this, this one and place it over here. Now, we, before we do this though, I wanna show you guys, when you're looking around, you guys can see the dimensions of, of the cylinder as well. So we wanna change, we wanna change the, the cylinder dimensions just a little bit. And uh, we wanna change the height to five. So we're gonna bring, so we're gonna grab the height and lower it down to five. Now it's gonna match the same height as the other one. We're gonna do that to both. So you take here and you drag it, bring it down. And then we're going to click on top view and we're gonna drag this one in place right here. We're gonna drag this one in place right here. So now, right now the objects are separated and as Dinah pointed out, when you see the different colors, they're currently separated and you can see here. But what we are going to do now is take both, we're gonna highlight, highlight all of it. And just like Dinah showed us, we drag and we highlight all of it. And we can click this little button over here, which is the group button. And now it becomes one, one big solid object. I'm gonna change the color to green. Now over here on the right side, we're going, we have this cylinder that's a hole. So what we're going to do is we're gonna create a hole at the end of the keychain. So we have to bring the grayed out hole out onto the to the field. Now this time, we want to make this one just a little bit smaller. We want to adjust the width. Right now it's 20. You see where it says 20. And we want to make it 15. So we want to make it a little bit smaller. And you're going to see why. Then we go back to the top view. And we drag it on the top. Now this is going to be cutting the hole that we're going to have on the keychain. So I'm going to show you what it looks like a little bit. So since it's clear, and now we're going to be grouping both of these, and another way to group, you can, you can group like this, where you can highlight it, or you can hold down the shift button. You click one, and it highlights both, hold on. Ah, so I like that one. So once you have them both pit, both selected, if you click the group button, you will see what happens. The hole disappears, and it and it creates the the hole for the keychain. The cutout. The cutout. The cutout disappears. Now, just like Dino was saying, if you wanted to go back and you ungroup it you will see that, those, that it comes right back. So in this case, we're gonna keep it grouped for now. The next step is going to be to be adding letters to the keychain. So here, just like we have on the basic shapes, we can click text and numbers. And here you have the different letters. So I'm gonna make this look like this. And we're gonna bring in some letters. So I'm gonna bring in my my initials, E J K, out to the out to the middle. Now you can also 
drag this text block up here. You can do the same thing by just bringing the text over and then typing in the text area, the letters that you want to do to place. Either way you do it is okay. And you notice here you get a little different font compared to the other letters. So I'm going to, I'm going to use this one up here and just drag it on top. Now, if you can see here, I can, I can make this a little bit smaller. Now I can leave the keychain like this and print it and it'll just be a little indentation on top or I can highlight it, press the hole over here and highlight the whole thing, group it. And as you can see now, now there's a hole through it. So as you can see, it's not that difficult. You can play around with it. You can, you can make whatever, whatever you want. You can use different types of shapes. You can make this a uh, unique. And I, and I think it's just a wonderful little beginner, beginner thing that you can create. And um, I know uh, for the next, for the next time that we we're going to be showing you Tinkercad, we can show you how to export on, you know, how to, how to export it into like a, a 3d, an STL file that you can use to 3d print. And then we'll, we can show you something a little bit more com complex, but this is just more to teach you guys, the, you know, what something simple that you guys can create on your own. You know, and and just like Marlon was saying, there's always a build the building blocks. You got to learn the basics first. And I highly suggest, just like Dinah was talking about, once you have your your object, you got to save it. Okay, just so you guys understand, the way that you save in Tinkercad is you go back to you click on the upper left corner, you click on the Tinkercad sign, and then it'll be saved. So that's. And when you want to go back into it, you just, you click on the, on the, on the thing. And there it is. And so one of the other, one of the other things that, that I didn't mention is up here, you can change the name of your, of the project that you're working on. So it, it automatically creates a name for you, but you can, you can change it to whatever you want. And then to go save it, click back over here. And then you'll see it in, in your project list. So in this case, I have, I have it right here. Now, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free. I'm going to stop the share. And if anyone has anything else to say. Uh, about hold, hold on before you stop the share. Cause I sure. thank you for, you know, this great information. Cause I'm like, I'm okay with Tinkercad, but I, you, by listening to you guys, I learn more and more. Sure, time. sure. Um, one thing I, I wanted to reiterate with what you're talking about, about going up to that little top left and yeah. clicking on Tinkercad to save. We were talking about this before. If you don't do that, um, it's going to lose your project, right? Yes. If you're in the, in the project, in this case, if I'm in Tinker this and I make a change and something happens, it will, it will basically revert back to the last time you saved it. It doesn't automatically save as, as far as I, as I could tell. Yeah. So the way you can ensure that you save it is just go back to the dashboard and it'll do an auto save at that point. So as soon as you click on that logo, yeah. it'll save the project you're working on. Right. Okay. Like there's yeah, no important. save. It's important. Yeah. There's no save button that, that I could tell, but that's, that's how you save. Yeah. I've lost a couple of projects like that and I didn't know. I thought it's automatically saved like in the cloud, like other uh, software but you have to do that yeah I do tell you that it does save it just depends on how fast your refresh rate is on your internet and oh, it's actually be, yeah. it, so sometimes it saved mine and sometimes it didn't when I was um, playing with my uh, the black okay. code keychain which I have 30 of to give to somebody <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah so I think it's it's just really kind of dependent on your your data rate uh, and sometimes if or if your internet cuts out Right. And you don't realize it and it doesn't kind of like refresh back to Tinkercad. It 
it's uh you lose what you did during that period yeah yeah the other thing too is you can invite people on the upper right corner to design with you i thought i always think this is a nice feature if you know if you have a friend that's doing something you want to share it you can click on here and and you can collaborate and send them a link to this particular project you're working on which is kind of neat you know you can send it to people share it with other people as well yeah that's a good transition edward because I, I wanted to ask all the folks who are here joining us create your keychain just go ahead and and create something like that hold on we have a person who's trying to get into the meeting so let me let it. but go ahead and create your keychain for example i have some things i design like this uh this is like a little stand for for a phone or for a tablet put it on your table and it holds your phone up i also designed this right here matter of fact i didn't design it i got it off of the internet because you can go to the couple of different websites and you guys have heard of raspberry pis right it's mm -hmm. like just like a little mini computer and i 3d printed this little case for my raspberry pi because otherwise you have the the raspberry pi and it's all by itself loose it's a really cool thing we also teach this stuff inside of our maker spaces but yeah, you know, there's so many different things you can design. Like Dinah was saying, go look around your house and find something that you can create that's gonna solve a problem. You know, do some design thinking. Think about some things that you, you wanna solve problems for. Uh, here's another thing I wanted to show you really quickly. I was showing you guys this before. Um, and I was showing you the different uh, Technobus pictures. Well, here's some other things that are kinda cool. I think I showed you the 3D printer that's on the techno bus. But check this out. You can make jewelry. Like, look at this jewelry that this person designed. Mm -hmm. And people are doing this, and they're making really good money because they buy a 3D printer, put it in their bedroom, and you can be a jewelry designer or fashion designer, and all you have to do is buy filament, and that's it. Have a website or have a social media. And here's something else that's really cool. I think you saw the picture earlier that I was showing you where Ashley was holding up the little baby Yoda. Well, this is it being printed right here, you know? So there's so many different things you can create. And as I mentioned before, you can come into our maker spaces or on our techno bus and be able to make this stuff. And Edward, I think you had a couple of keychains. Did you want to hold up some of those keychains? Oh yeah, sure. So, so here's a couple of the keychains that we've made on the techno bus. And, and it's kind of interesting, the ones that you have the two different colors, since it's kind of raised, the letters are raised, you just have to stop, stop it from printing when it reaches a certain point and flip the, the filament to a different color and then let it complete the printing job. So that's yeah. how you can get like kind of two tones of colors. Perfect. And, and the one on the techno book that you saw there, this one was painted. So you can actually, once you take the object, you can paint it, you know, nice. and it's really neat. So you might have to sand it down a little bit in order to paint it, and you have to get some paint that's actually for um, objects itself. You know, you can't just get a, like an acrylic paint. It won't actually stay on the plastic itself. And you could also, like, I've made this little desk, um, like, name holder that I have here. Um, that's to keep my little... Um, that's for my company, of course. And then, of course, um, your keychain, they'll look like this. That's my name, but it, it looks backwards because it's backwards. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, guys, this, people, teenagers, this is just a little teaser just to get you just started with using Tinkercad. It's free, it's online. So, go ahead and play with it, make some cool stuff, and go ahead and save it. Um, maybe Edward can show you really quickly how to just like export that as a JPEG or as a file and send it to us because we or if you want to hold on to it and show it to us for next class because you know we have our next class in Tinkercad is coming up this coming Friday on the 15th same time four o'clock so come back with your design something that you've created and you know be willing to share it with us it's always cool to share because once we're talking and sharing things, you can inspire somebody else to design something different. So make sure to check out the the uh, the gallery of things that could also help you with some ideas, or you can see like what else can you design. So don't be limited by what you see, um, and you'd be surprised if you actually draw or or paint. Like 
when you're drawing, if you notice, most of your drawings start with these basic shapes as uh, Denise, these primitive shapes that Denise was talking about. So go ahead and do that. And what's great about Tinkercad is once you keep creating stuff and creating stuff, you end up with a whole gallery in your saved files of all kind of really cool stuff. And some of these things you can sell them online. So there's just so many different ways you can use, use this technology. So we're, we're going to wrap it up because it's five o'clock and I know some of our staff have to go and do some other, uh, you know, conferences, but we hope that you enjoyed our first class, our first Tinkercad Tinker lesson between Black Girls Code and the Miami-Dade Public Library System and Denise Mendez. Come back next time. We're going to show you much more deeper stuff in Tinkercad this time. So hopefully you'll join us and I hope that you enjoyed it. I see one message here. Oh, someone is saying thank you. <laughs> Denise said thank you. Yay. So hope you, hopefully you guys had fun. We'll see you next time, okay? Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye.